Hello everyone, my name is Yuval Tsur, Antenna, RF and Microwave Design Engineer. This session uh, you are about to hear will explain you how to design a depressor from a couple of given filters focusing this time on bandpass filters. In order to discuss a deplexer design, we will first have to go over a few basics of Smith chart. This session will not uh, focus on Smith chart. However, uh, there are a few essential points uh, I would like to cover at the, begin at the beginning of the session. The next part will focus on understanding how a single uh, a filter looks like on a Smith chart. Both two parts will give us the tools for the third and the main part of the session, which is the step-by-step -step duplexer design recipe. So let's start by looking uh, on a system which is connected to a transmission line with an impedance of a ZO, like here in this uh, image. It could be a common 50 ohm, line or any other impedance like 75 ohm or around 300 ohm uh, which is uh, in uh, the waveguide case. When looking into the system from the side of the transmission line we will generally say measure a complex impedance with a real and imaginary part. When we use a Smith chart, we first have to normalize this impedance by dividing both the real and the imaginary parts in ZO. Now, regarding the Smith chart, the center point represents ZO. It is equal to ZO and it is right in the center. The left point marked here represents zero impedance, zero ohm impedance, as if our system is simply a shunt. The right point here represents an infinite ohm impedance, as if we had an open circuit at the end of our transmission line. The circles on the Smith chart represent the real a part of the imp input impedance which is the resistance. The unity circle which is the circle that passes through the center of the Smith chart represents the real part which is equal to ZO. Since it is normalized then it is the unity a circle and the a resistance is equal to 1. The arcs on the Smith chart represent the reactance. The horizontal line represents the reactance zero, meaning every point along the horizontal line has a zero reactance. The upper arcs represent the positive reactance that we usually call inductive. And the lower arcs represent the negative reactance which we usually call capacitive. Now, here is an example of the input impedance 25 plus J25 ohm, which is for a 50 ohm system, meaning a system that have a transmission line of 50 ohm in its terminal, uh, and we can say that this is the characteristic impedance of the system, the impedance, the normalized impedance would be 0.5 plus J 0.5. In this case, we see the impedance is located on the arc 0.5 for the imaginary part and on the circle 0.5 for the real part. The reflection coefficient is the normalized vector that starts from the center of the Smith chart to the point that we have just marked. The radius of the circle whose circumference touches our impedance point and its center is located at the center of the Smith chart 
is the magnitude of the reflection coefficient used, for instance, to calculate the return loss. Now, here we have our 25 plus J25 ohm like before, and I ask what will happen to a, an impedance view on a Smith chart if we add ZO transmission line at its terminal and measure our system including the transmission line. The impedance image will start rotating clockwise around the center of the Smith chart. Of course, assuming we have an ideal lossless transmission line. Otherwise, the radius of the movement will change. After an eighth wavelength, the image has a, a rotated in 90 degrees, as you can see here. After quarter wavelength, the image has rotated 180 degrees and actually jumped to the other side of the center of the Smith chart. The last issue we have to cover before we start is the reflection coefficient view of a passband filter on a Smith chart. The poles that we see in the 2D graph are the loops right here in the center of the Smith chart. The passband return loss can be calculated from the radius of the smallest center circle that wraps inside all those loops. At the stop band, we will see how the reflection coefficient approaches, approaches the value of 1, which is uh, at the, near the circumference of the Smith chart. Now, having the Smith chart tools in our hand, we, can, we are ready to start designing a depressor. Let's say we wish to design a duplexer between the cellular band, 800 to 1000 uh, megahertz, and the GPS band in frequency in uh, 1575 megahertz. For this task, we start by selecting filters which are satisfying for us in terms of rejection, insertion loss, and return loss. In this example, I have designed two filters with a 200 megahertz bandwidth uh, each, as can be seen here. Next thing we do uh, is designing a delay line at the input of each filter alone. Let's look at the cellular band filter. I start by marking both the cellular band and the GPS band on the reflection view. We see that the pass band is 50 ohm, around 50 ohm, and the stop band in this case is slightly capacitive, near zero. Now I wish to rotate the Smith chart view until the markers of the GPS band that uh, indicates the frequencies of the GPS band uh, will be located as close to the infinite point, to the open circuit point on the right side of the Smith chart. And that, uh, of course, uh, I do as close as possible. It will not be located exactly on this point, of course, but I try to locate it as close as possible. How I do it? I do it uh, using a, a transmission line as explained before, previously. In this case, I needed a 57 degrees transmission line at frequency of 900 megahertz in order to rotate the reflection image to the desired location. And as can be seen, the GPS part of the reflection image is now located at the right side of the Smith chart near the infinite ohm impedance. As I mentioned, we repeat this process for the GPS filter too. First, we start from the original view of the filter on a Smith chart like before. Mm -hmm. Then we rotate it using transmission line until the cellular part of the reflection, which is stop and I remind, is lying near the infinite point, near the uh, high, very high impedance on the Smith chart. 
Uh, when doing that, uh, I got 148 degrees at uh, 1575 megahertz in order to rotate the image to the right position. The next step is implementing the transmission lines. We can do that using common transmission lines like MicroStrip, WaveGuide or Coax uh, or any other. Uh, or the other option is using uh, LAMP elements. In case we wish to use transmission lines, we can uh, use any electromagnetic or radio frequency design simulator to design the delay lines that we need for each filter. If we wish to use LAMP elements, we will have to go through the following process. Let's look at the, the cellular side, for instance, where we need 57 degrees transmission line uh, at 900 megahertz. If we define F1 to be a 900 megahertz, then the following two formulas uh, will be used to calculate the capacitor and the inductor that we need. Note the 75 degrees in the formula is here. Implementing a, a pi structure, as described here on the bottom side of the slide, with the calculated inductor and, the, and capacitor from before, we'll have almost equivalent delay to what we need. Note carefully here. An inductor and capacitor have to be modeled properly when dealing with the uh, high frequencies. This session will not cover how to uh, do that. For this, uh, please uh, view the session dealing with the RLC modeling at high frequencies. Next thing we do is fine-tune the values of our inductor and capacitor by maintaining the relations between them. I remind the relations are L equals to C multiplied by ZO squared. That we do until we have exactly the phase, the delay that we need. Of course, the delay is the angle of the S21 parameter. Now be careful here. The LCPI structure that we presented is also, you see here, is also a, a low pass filter. We don't want its cut of a frequency to fall inside our band, don't we? See here how it is far above the cellular band, which is our band. Now, what happens if it falls inside our band? Let's, uh, let's assume it has fallen inside our band. What we will do now? In this case, we will use the following formula to calculate our LT LC components. Note the 180 degrees here that replace the 90 degrees in the formula. In this case, we will use fifth order LC structure as described. As you can see, the cut of frequency is twice higher than before, but still we have the 57 degrees that we needed. Uh, the, same, uh, the same process we repeat also for the other filter. Now, all we have left is uh, to connect the two filters and their delay lines together. If we design properly, we won't have to do anything further. You can see here how the deplexer is nicely matched. Why does it work? Because if we look at the cellular band, where the cellular filter has an impedance of approximately 50 ohm, we have designed the delay line on the GPS side that will reflect infinity from there and 50 ohm in parallel to infinity, it's still 50 ohm. So we have it still matched after we connect the two filters. Same from the GPS band. We designed the transmission line that reflects high impedance from the cellular side in the GPS frequencies. So 50 ohm in parallel to very high impedance is again around 50 ohm. That's why the uh, after the connection, the, the two filters still remain matched. The other frequencies, though, has the rejection that they had uh, previously, uh, originally from the original filters, and uh, that doesn't hurt by uh, the connection in, in the midpoint. 